Hey, this is Kenneth, and today I'm turning this mismatched speaker that I found at a Goodwill into a Bluetooth speaker using a TDA 7492 based amplifier board that you can get on Amazon. These are typically about $15, and they come as a bare circuit board. Ah. They come as a bare circuit board with a Bluetooth audio receiver, a Class D amplifier, uh, power and then screw terminals for the two speakers, and sometimes a eighth inch audio in so that you can mix Bluetooth with uh, your audio. These tend to be kind of hit or miss. Some of them I've gotten are real good, and some of them I've gotten have just been noisy. So I would encourage you to, if, if the first one you get just doesn't seem to work well, try buying a second one. Um, I've always managed to kill them, so I'm going to finally package one nicely in this speaker. This is just a mono speaker that I got. So it's got two wires out the back. So I think I'm going to put this board inside of here. Um, and then put a power connector here. So to power this, I pulled a random one and a half amp, 12 volt, 2.1 millimeter by 5.5 millimeter, which happens to fit in there. Um, so like this is the bare minimum that you need. Like you could just route this in there. To make it a little bit nicer, I've got another random piece of 2.1 millimeter barrel jack with some cord on it, and then a female connector that this will I'll mount this on the back panel and then use this as a jumper inside to the actual board. Now these boards do to have um, play, start, stop, um, volume up and down buttons on here. You don't need to reach any of these. Like you could conceivably bring these out as buttons somewhere on the case, but all of this is also controllable from your phone. And so I don't really feel the need to be able to reach any of that. And so we're just going to enclose this inside of that. So that's kind of the parts. I'll have a list of all of that if you want to find any of the other stuff on uh, Amazon. For the speakers, I'm assuming that you're going to find whatever speaker you want. But let's go. Okay, so the internals of this is really what I expected. So we've got one big speaker cone here, which may have, yeah. And so it even says it's a eight ohm, 15 watt cone, right? So that's everything we expected. Um, what I didn't really quite expect was that this, this back plate, which just came out with some screws, is quite a bit thicker than I expected. So mounting, Mounting this jack through there isn't going to go anywhere near as nicely as I had hoped. So it may make more sense to just make this permanently part of just thread, thread the power jack through and just make it permanently part of the assembly. Um, since I mean, I'm going to be installing this in one place and I don't really care about it being connectorized and this is, this is not going to work. I mean, I, I could put a different connector on there that's better suited for a thick panel mount like that, or I could cut out like a rectangle and put like a piece of sheet metal on it. Um, but I, I wasn't, I'm not too dead set on connectorizing it because like this is going to get plugged into the wall 
and then sit there. So like I'm not trying to make a portable battery powered one. If I was trying to make a battery powered Bluetooth speaker, um, which you could do, right? Like you can run this, th I think this thing comes rated for like nine to 20 volts or something. So you could, you could conceivably build this somehow to run off of like a car battery or something. Um, but yeah, given this, I think, I think I'm just going to, um, like thread, th yeah, thread this through the slot, maybe tie a knot in it so that it, it will hopefully not pull out of the board and then just mount that. So I think this project actually just got a little bit easier because um, the panel mount isn't going to work. So I guess at this point it is wire up the speaker to this, which the board has screw terminals here, but it also has little solder holes. And so I think I'm going to see if I can just solder these wires onto the left channel um, and then somehow glue this probably up, up here, I think. Yeah, glue it up there. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. So if I was wiring this up as a dual speaker setup, so if I, you know, for some reason had, to, you know, so if, if you're building this in a system where you have two speakers, you are probably going to want to care about which connector is your right negative, right positive, left negative, and left net positive, which it is silk screened on the board there. So like I can see that like left positive is this one and left negative is this one. And then typically on your speaker wire, one of the two sides will have like a white stripe or like a ribbing on it. And that's typically your positive side, I think, I believe. But since I'm only wiring one speaker, the polarity of anything doesn't really matter because I'm not trying to match the polarity between two separate speakers, right? And if you mismatch the polarity um, in the room, your two speakers will be fighting each other. But since I only have one speaker, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm Assuming that having the right channel unpopulated isn't going to cause problems, but it might. Um, so anyway, so I'm going to take a pair of wire strippers and just strip back just a little bit of the insulation on this. And now if you had thicker, thicker wire or you didn't want to make this permanent, you could just put it in the uh, terminal block here and tighten the screws. But I am going to solder these wires into the extra solder holes they have right behind the screw screw terminal. And so I'm just going to thread them through the holes like that and bend them a little bit so that it stays there. Yep. Oh, well, little pieces of wire is a little bit loose there. Come on. Then probably grabs my helping hands just to hold this up. And we've got a soldering iron and some brass wool to clean it. Um, having a clean soldering iron is kind of more important than a lot of people appreciate. So I'm going to come in. So when I'm soldering this, I want to make sure that I'm not melting the solder onto the iron, is I want to heat up the parts and then solder, then melt the solder onto that. So I'm coming in here to heat that up, and then I'm touching the solder to the other side of the wire, because the wire, the solder has flux in it that I want to be activated on the wire, not on my soldering iron. And so I'm going to do that on both sides. Doop, doop. Then, since those legs are a little bit long, I'm going to take a pair of flush cutters, cut that down flush. Come on. And that's all set. Yeah, so that's, that's connected.
you could conceivably do, you could try and figure out which of the pads on here um, were positive and negative for the uh, barrel jack and, you know, cut, you could just cut the end off of this and strip it and put it in, um, but I, I'm just going to leave it connectorized just because um, I'm not too motivated to solve that. So this point, this comes with uh, these plastic feet. So I'm going to use these as kind of a way to glue it onto the wood just using super glue. And so these have kind of a compression fit. But if you squish those, it should go through the hole and it locks in. Maybe it clicks. Maybe not. Maybe not. So hey, so this, this turned out super nice. I, I mainly picked this speaker because I really liked the aesthetic of it. And I don't have any sort of amplifier system to power this with, so I just bought one of those $15 amplifiers and glued it in there. So real quick project. You didn't really need any tools if you didn't want to solder it. You, I mean, you needed a wire stripper to get it into the screw terminals, but you could have just used a screwdriver and screwed it in. And then I didn't bring any of the controls out from it just because I didn't feel like I needed any of it, but you could. So there's, there's lots of different possibilities you could do with this, depending on what speaker you've got and what controls you want. And if you want, you could even like try and bring the LEDs out. That would just take some tricky soldering. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's what I've got. So hey, thanks for watching. And uh, let me know if you build one yourself and send me a picture of it. Thanks.